Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. My brethren, peace of the Lord. I invite everyone to stand up. We're going to be open up our Bibles in the book of Nehemiah. Chapter 1. Nehemiah chapter 1 from verse 4. So it was when I heard the, these words that I sat down and wept and mourned for many days. I was fasting and praying before the God of heaven. And I said, I pray, Lord God of heaven, O great and awesome God, you who keep your covenant and mercy with those who love you and observe your commandments. Please let your ear be attentive and your eyes open that you may hear the prayer of your servant which I pray before you now day and night for the children of Israel your servants and confess the sins of the children of Israel which we have sinned against you both my friends house and I have sinned we have acted very corruptly against you and have not kept the commandments, the statutes, nor the ordinance which you commanded your servant Moses. Remember, I pray the word that you commanded your servant Moses, saying, If you are unfaithful, I will scatter you among the nations. Amen? The church may be seated. You're still going to hear another song.
Blessed be the name of the Lord. My brethren, the Bible, it show us a story regarding the relationship between God and man. And from the beginning, we see that the will of the Lord was to always bless men. When God created man, after creating everything else, he had already, uh, he was pleased with the creation of men. And we see that the Lord, he gave and continued to give every opportunity for men to follow him, for men to walk on his path, so that man may be able to go back to have, once again, eternity in the presence of God. And we see this in the entire Bible. God begins with Adam. He teaches Adam. He places Adam in the paradise. And then he shows the way that in which he wanted Adam to praise him. He shows to Adam how he should come to the Lord and have fellowship with God. And Adam disobeys. He breaks this covenant. And this teaching was also uh, given to the children of Adam. And then was also given to the remaining until it came to our days. The book of Nehemiah shows to us the moment in which God was giving to the people of Israel a new beginning. And Nehemiah shows exactly the situation that led the people to enter into the, the difficulty into, into which they entered. So this prayer of Nehemiah, in these first few verses of this book, described to us exactly what led the people to come to the point where, where, they, where they arrived in the situation of misery, in the situation of abandonment, the situation in which there was no way for the people to live in a land, on a land that was given to them as an inheritance, a land that was given to them as a promise from God. And Nehemiah describes this. this. In Nehemiah, throughout his prayer to the Lord and text that we are reading, he describes, it's like if he, Nehemiah was going back in time, remembering what was happening, And it is interesting that Nehemiah here may, uh, mentions a couple of things. In no moment, Nehemiah blamed the Lord. Have you noticed? In no moment, Nehemiah placed the blame on God because he knew that the blame rested solely on man because of its disobedience. While Israel fulfilled what was um, agreed upon with God, God became the God of Israel. God can do all things. God can, that can perform miracles. A God that leads the people to live while still in the desert. A God that makes Deus men resurrect. A God that can, that can take care of everything. A God that is always willing and loves helping men. A God that is 24 hours a day at the disposal to listen to the prayer of man. To hear the request of help from men. That's our God. And while Israel did that, 
the providence always came. But when Israel broke this covenant, there came the consequence of disobedience. There came the, the consequence of the uh, going away from the Lord. It was the consequence of everything that was living while being children of God and living while having a God that was above all gods. And it happened because Nehemiah, he sat here, there was the abandonment of the people from the commandments. And it says here on verse 7, We got corrupted against you. I didn't keep the commandments, nor the statutes, nor the ordinances which you commanded your servant Moses. So man enters into difficulties in which man enters many times, even still being in a church, even while still being considered a servant of God, but when man lets go of the statutes of the Lord, when man lets go of the word, and man lets go of what God has as instruction for man, man gets corrupted. Man gets corrupted. If there is an abandon, abandonment from the commitment of maintaining the word of the Lord alive, if there is an abandonment from keeping the, the plan of the Lord in our daily lives, the abandonment from, from it leads to departure from God. It's not like God is, is punishing us. God's not saying, oh, no, you're going to bless if you serve me, or if you're not, if you're not um, following me, I'm going to punish you. No, that's not how it, how it works. When man uh, disobey the Lord, it leads to departure from God. Our God never changes. He is, our God is three times holy. Our God is almighty. He is uh, all-knowing. He is omnipresent. And Nehemiah continues in his prayer, showing to the Lord the importance of this. And we see here, in a prophetic way, Nehemiah says, Lord, we, we sinned. The blame is on us. He didn't say the blame is on the people of Israel. Even though he, he was living outside of Israel, he didn't blame the people on its own. He also placed himself amongst those to receive the blame. I would sin. In the house of my father and myself, we all sin. You know what it is? It is to live in a body, it is to live in fellowship. This is what is. When we leave the benefit of salvation, many times when we are in situations of difficulty, we are living moments, uh, difficult moments in our lives, trials, situations in which we have to make decisions, we don't know how to make them, and when we make decisions, we make the wrong choices, but being on the body, being inside of the house of the Father, being inside of this spiritual environment, causes us to receive the benefit of prayer that many times is so difficult the day is so difficult it's rare but sometimes it happens so difficult that we don't even have uh, strength to pray I don't know if it ever happened to you sometimes it's so difficult the anguish is so great that the first thing that causes us to, to do is to stop reading the word and not wanting to pray to the Lord and, and this if you continue in this situation, we will go uh, farther and farther from the Lord. But when we enter into the house of the Lord, when we enter here, we receive the benefits of being in an environment where the Holy Spirit is uh, moving around, where the Holy Spirit rests, where the Holy Spirit has freedom to operate during, during the service, and we receive a deliverance from the Lord. We receive a renewal. We receive a sustenance. We have reasons to continue in the presence of the Lord.
And Nehemiah says, Lord, we sinned. We confess to you our sins, our transgressions, our failures, the fact that we abandoned, Lord, the commitment that we had had with you. The departure leads men from uh, to not be able to hear the voice of God. In Jerusalem, it came to the point that so deplorable that not even the place of adoration to God, which was the temple, not even the temple, the place of adoration, had remained standing. Even the holiest place that we can call the moment in which the place where in which God manifested, the place in which God spoke with the people, the place where people go to the Lord to ask forgiveness and ask for a blessing to remain alive was already being toppled, was contaminated, not even a place to pray that people of Israel had anymore. Can you imagine that? And all of this caused the judgment of God to fall upon Israel. And corruption is something that is terrible. Corruption, it destroys men. Not even spiritually speaking, but also financially speaking, and materially speaking, humanly speaking. We know exactly what it is. Corruption, when it enters, it destroys everything. It leaves nothing left, not even... If, if there is no intervention, if there is no one that goes against it, everything is, is destroyed. And spiritually speaking, the word speaks about corruption. What does the Bible speak about corruption? What is the cause of corruption in man? Who knows? The Bible says that if there is no prophecy, what happens? The people gets corrupted. If there is no prophecy, if we don't have the word of God, if we don't have the commandment of God, if there is no revelation from God, if the church that don't have God speaking, the church that doesn't have the commitment with the word, with the doctrine, a church that is not, is not paying attention to the voice of God, what is going to happen? Corruption. What is corruption? Corruption are the wrong things that enter when you go astray from what is right and what is the truth. What is to go astray? It's, going, it's you from going away from the path is for you to completely not completely go astray from what is the will of of the Lord. So my brethren, Nehemiah, he saw this. He saw that not leaving Israel, not leaving exactly what the people was, but he saw, he identified that. He said, Lord, we are have all been corrupted because we did not maintain your word. Your, you did not keep your commandment. Have you seen that? He said, Lord, we forgot about your word. We closed our ears for you, to your voice. And the cause of this, the consequence was corruption. Judah was invaded. The people was taken captive. But he says, Lord, we have remembered of your word, the word that you given to your servant Moses, that, was, that we are going to transgress and that we are going to be scattered amongst the nations. Now he, he pours himself out to the Lord. And in Nehemiah, he says, he pours himself to God's feet and tears and tears and fasting and prayer day and, day and night now Nehemiah was being taken over by the Holy Spirit and my brethren this initiative of Nehemiah this intervention that God has made has to 
happen in our hearts because we cannot go astray from what is eternal. We who have been called, we who have been delivered, we who are on this path with the Lord, there's no other way for us to continue on this path unless we open up our hearts and ask the Lord for help. Ask for the intervention from God because alone, where you are alone, you're not going to be able to be victorious. That's why Nehemiah makes mention of the church or the body because alone, where he was, he would not be able to bring the revival and the restoration and bring a people to reconstruct Jerusalem. And the reconstruction of Jerusalem speaks exactly about this, speaks about the reconstruction of what something that we have, have already lost thanks to the disobedience and sin and that we went astray from the Lord. But not tonight the Lord is giving us the, the means to organize our lives in the presence of the Lord so that we may not enter into the same mistake that we have had so that the Lord may always show the right direction and that we may always have an ear paying attention and our eyes open to observe and to follow and walk on what is the path of the Lord. We need to be like Nehemiah. There's no, possi no other possibility. There's no other way. The Lord once took us away from the world and today we know the Word of God. And the Word of God is our direction. It's our north. The Word of God is our is, is what guides us. We are the church of the last days. This is the generation of the last days. Biblically, by faith, if we analyze the hi biblical history, we who have been living here, we are the church of the last days. We're not speaking about a, a church, about I'm speaking about a people, the people that serve the Lord, because it's not going to be another. We have no time for another church. The Bible says that there's no time for the preparation of a new people. It's not possible. But in order for us to be a part of this people inside of this environment, we need to be bringing back the prophecy from God. We need to be living the Word of God. We need to live the Word, and not only to preach it, but also to live the Word of God. And it's not enough for you to have a Bible, have a song book, and to proclaim. And that's what Israel had. Israel spoke of a God, but was a God of the, from the past that operated in the, the Red Sea and had done miracles through Moses and rescued the people. Israel had everything, all of this, but he, they should not only be limited to speaking about a God, and God is calling us today not only to speak about a God, but also to testify about a God that has been operating in our lives. And we have this mission as a church. We need to bring, once again, the Word of God into our days. And the prophecy that we have today is one alone. Jesus is coming. The message that we have is this. Jesus will return. Amen. Jesus will return. Are you ready to meet with Jesus? Are you ready to pray like Nehemiah prayed? Are you ready to confess to the Lord, confess your sins to the Lord, your mistakes, and admit them and ask forgiveness from God? And ask, Lord, have mercy. Place me back on your path, Lord. I don't want to stay in this world. I don't want to live without your grace, without your mercy. I don't want to perish, Lord. I don't want to remain corrupted. And tonight, may God testify this in your heart and in our hearts that we need to allow the Word of God to remain living in our hearts. You know why? Because if we keep the Word of God, we will not 
be able to sin against the Lord. I kept your word in my heart so that I would not be able to sin against you. And that's the secret. We need to be on the Lord. Not only hearing the advices from the Lord, but also putting the advice of, of God in practice in our lives. And if you do this, and if I do this, Jerusalem will be reconstructed and your fellowship with God, your life with God will be restored and God will give you the assurance that once again the place of adoration is where you, whatever you are and if you uh, are sincere and if you open up your heart with sincerity you will be an, an adorer of the living God May God bless us. We're going to hear a song. And at this moment, with our eyes closed, you'll be maybe speaking with God. Like Nehemiah said, Lord, have mercy on my life. You know me. I'm flawed. But I want, Lord, to serve you better. I need to be paying attention to your word. I need to give proper worth to your teachings and your word, Lord. Your word needs to be my life, a priority, Lord. While the praise group will be singing, you can praise to the Lord. to God. The Lord has given a couple of spiritual gifts. And one of the spiritual gifts God has shown a woman that went to here tonight. She has had many difficulties 
to maintain her spiritual life active, having prosperity in her spiritual life. And many times she is resistant to walk in Jesus. She always sleeps up and she comes back. But look, the Lord tonight is giving you a deliverance and allow you to allow you to recognize that away from the path you're subject to a, a death without Jesus, without God. When man is walking according to his own will, when man leads a life without having the governance from God, man is exposing himself. Man, his subject is man isolate, isolates himself. So then you may find a path that may not be a path that will lead you to heaven and this path will lead you to an eternal death away from God but the path is here the way is Jesus and you need to open up your heart and accept this way there is no other open up your heart and you will see how Jesus, how the Holy Spirit will guide you, will lead you to have experiences that will be a landmark in your life forever. And those experiences that will cause you to always go back, walk on the path. Amen. The Lord also has shown another woman who entered here. And she, she has a Bible. But it is interesting that the, the brothers saw that the, her Bible only had a couple of books, just a few books of the Bible. It was not a complete Bible. But tonight, she had received from the hands of an angel a Bible, a new Bible that uh, was complete. And she began to read this Bible, something, things that she had never read before. And she has been able to see through reading this Bible that Jesus is the savior of man she had never known this because she had never lived this but tonight you had an experience of salvation with jesus my brethren the gospel is this christianity is you choosing what to read in the bible what to follow in the bible and how to place as an example in your life eternal gospel is you leaving the word of god in depth is to open up your heart and let God guide you and you open up your heart and keep consulting the Lord and asking God what to do and what not to do because when you do this you have you receive the good advices from the Lord and those advice are going to lead you to have a life of victories in the presence of the Lord amen so it is it's no use my brethren to what to live in a different way the word of the lord is available to us you should not live according to your own mind the revelation of god is the prophecy of god is one alone if you begin to choose and cancel the word if you begin to ignore the word you always see like this woman here only living defeats in her life because the prophecy of God shows us and points out the direction. And we said the prophecy that we have today is, is that Jesus is returning. Amen. We're going to have a word of glorification to the Lord. I invite the church to stand up. Or, We praise your Father for your love. Because you are making yourself present in our lives. You have taken care of us. You know our hearts and your and our limitations. We praise the Lord. Because you have not left us alone. You have not allowed us to fall, Lord. You're always giving us you know, 
Nós te bendizemos, ó Pai, por estar aqui na tua presença. Te glorificamos, ó Pai, por tudo, ó Deus. E até aqui o Senhor nos sustentou, ó Deus. Te bendizemos por tudo, ó Pai, em nome Amém, de Jesus. Glória a Jesus. Glória a Jesus. Bless be the name of the Lord. tonight, praise your name. Lord, we want to make the prayer of Nehemiah our own prayers. We ask that you may renew our lives, Lord. Remove any transgression, any failure, everything that does not belong to a servant of God. We ask that you may show the way, Lord, and that we may always be willing to serve you better, Lord, and that your word, Lord, may transform our hearts and that we may give room for your Holy Spirit in our hearts and that we may be able to live what is your will, Lord. Do not allow us to be deceived, Lord. Don't, don't allow us to make mistakes, Lord, but lead us, Lord, to always be under of, of our power hands, under your wings, Lord. 
because there is no better place than to be here in your presence, Lord. Take us home in peace. Accept our adoration, our praise, our shout of victory, our joy is to serve you, Lord. Take us home in peace. Give us a week on your presence as a prayer that we say in the name of Jesus. And when your name we say the wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, our eternal Father, the sweet and tender consolations and the gifts of the Holy Spirit be poured out upon all of us now and forevermore. Amen. Se alguém desejar uma oração, nos colocando à disposição para auxiliar, ajudar, orar por você naquilo que for preciso. Amém? Amém.